you have in this case um, is intubation. Okay, intubation becomes a big problem here, no? So how to decide on the intubation? So you decide on intubation depending on if you know the poison and if you know the trajectory. If you know the poison and if you know the trajectory. For example, if you have a simple opioid poisoning, okay, or you have a benzodiazepine overdose, patient's GCS is low, patient will be sleeping. You don't go and intubate that patient. He's sleeping, his RR is low, okay. He's not going to have secretions because the toxidrome says it doesn't, it's not going to have any secretions. He's just sleeping. If he's sleeping, let him sleep for some more time, he will get up. Don't go and intubate him. I just said, don't go and intubate him. Similarly, if you have benzodiazepine overdose with an RR that is low, so we said, when you have said the hypnotics, you can have the respiratory to be on the low side. <coughs> then that patient will develop a carbon dioxide intoxication because he will develop low RR, carbon dioxide accumulated in his body and he will become problematic because of hypercarbia. In such cases when the RR is low, again don't intubate because there is a drug to increase the RR. Flumazenil will help to improve the RR. In narcotics, naloxone will help to get off the respiratory depression. But so you have to know the trajectory, what you are facing. What if the trajectory, if you have a TCA poisoning and he's come down, no, 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 intubate because the TCA poisoning will lead to arrhythmia. If you have a TCA poisoning, huh, it is going to cause arrhythmia. Patient will arrest. No, intubate. If the GCS is low, you have to know the trajectory what you're looking at. You understand? If you have an organ of phosphorus poisoning, you know if this patient aspirates, it's going to go into the lungs, you will die. I need to give very high doses of stuff. Intubate, intubate. You understand? Huh? So if you have isobasal corrosive poisoning that has come in, corrosive poisoning, you must think like this, corrosive how do I intubate? It's going to be difficult here. There may be corrosive, everything will be burnt inside, it will be difficult to put my tube inside. You want to think like this. Clear? When you are intubating, when you are intubating such patients, it's very, very essential to think what is the trajectory or the clinical course of the particular patient, depending on the poisoning. If the poisoning is going to leave quickly, I would wait. Uh, you understand? I don't want to intubate in such cases. So, huh? Now, what about if the patient ceases in front of you? What is the drug you would use? If the patient ceases in front of you, huh? So I will use, will I use, uh, uh, will I use ferritoin? I will not use ferritoin. Why will I not use ferritoin? Because it is sodium channel blocker. It is sodium channel blocker. I don't want to use ferritoin because it will, it will mix my everything. Ki kya chal raha hai. If it goes into something, it will be something else only. I will not use sodium channel. The drug of anti-epileptic of choice in such cases is usually a benzodiazepine like lorazepam followed by levetiracetam. The drug of choice is usually Benzodiazepine followed by uh, a liver tiracetam, not phenytoin. Okay. Similarly, if a patient goes into arrhythmia, if the patient goes to arrhythmia, patient is in front of you and goes into arrhythmia, which is possible, is come with some dose overdose, sympathomimetic overdose. For example, he's taken a sympathomimetic drug amphetamine and he's gone into overdose. If the overdose has come to you and he's having regular runs of VDAX, what will you do in such cases? Which is the drug you'll use? You'll have to give an anti arrhythmic, but I will not use amiodarone. I will not use amiodarone because amiodarone itself will cause prolongation of the QT. QT. Huh? I will not know whether what is the toxicity, what if my toxicity is QT prolonged. I cannot, I can't really look at that. You understand? So I can't give amiodarone. <coughs> the drug of choice in such case is usually lidocaine. Mm -hmm. It's usually lidocaine. Okay. At a dose uh, that is an anti-arrhythmic dose. Clear? Huh?